Hi everyone. In this video, I am trying to troubleshoot this particular problem. I am trying to turn on my target device in the PBS environment and for whatever reason, it is not booting into Windows and it just says operating system not found Pixie M0F exiting Intel Pixie ROM. So I see this error message. So I'll just show that to you. I'll just try to restart the machine. So what happens is when the machine is coming up, okay, so it's trying to boot up and it is trying to contact DHCP server and it is taking a lot of time to get the IP address from the DHCP server. So, so it's trying to gather some information, but it is unable to get the IP address basically from the DHCP server. Yeah, so the request seems to be timing out. So let's see what is going to happen. Okay, it says Pixie E53 no boot file name received Pixie M0F exiting Intel Pixie ROM OS not found or operating system not found. Okay, this is an interesting issue. Uh, but what we can do is since it was taking it, it was taking such a long time to communicate with the DHCP server. So I believe that this is something to do with uh, uh, DHCP server. So if you come across this kind of issue in your uh, PBS environment, what you can do is uh, if you already have access to DHCP server in your uh, uh, PBS environment, then you can definitely go ahead and go ahead and check the DHCP server, see all the details. But uh, in most of the environments, you know, DHCP server is maintained by a network team or some other team, firewall team. So in that scenario, what you have to do is you need to check with them to troubleshoot this particular problem. So in my lab environment, I have access to DHCP server. So what I would like to do is I would like to log into the DHCP server and see what is actually happening. Okay. So this is my DHCP server. I will just quickly uh, check the status of the services once. So I'm going to services. So this is my DHCP server. Okay. Uh, so these are the services. Okay. Active Directory domain services, AD web services. Okay. Everything seems good. Uh, DHCP client is running. It's automatic, which is good. DHCP server is also in running state, which is good. So everything looks good from the services console here. So basically, if you see here, it says performs TCP, TCP IP configuration for DHCP clients, including dynamic assignments of IP addresses. So this service is responsible for assigning IP addresses to the devices in the network. So this looks to be good. Uh, let's do one thing. Let's try to restart this service. Okay, let's try to restart DHCP server service. And uh, okay, now we have restarted it. Let's go back and reboot this target device and see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to reset the machine. Now the target device is going to boot and it is trying to contact the DHCP server now. We have just restarted the service. Let's see if it is going to contact the DHCP server or not this time. Still trying to get the IP address from the DHCP server. So it is trying to load. But the DHCP server is not giving any IP address. So the target device is still waiting for the IP address. And it says no boot file name received operating system not found again. All right. So, okay, in this case, what we can do is, okay, we have already checked the services here on the DHCP server. Let's go to DHCP scope, okay? So, DHCP scope where you configure the IP addresses for your uh, uh, target devices. So, let me go to DHCP, DHCP, and uh, once you click on it, okay, so this is the place where you can configure the scope. You can uh, uh, mention the IP addresses and other details, how many IP addresses you can, how many, the range of IP addresses and other details you can configure it here. So 
so so this is my dhcp information so i'm going to expand this okay so everything seems up okay ipv6 it's uh, good uh, if you see ipv4 here there is some blue check mark right next to it and if you see ipv6 here there is a green check mark next to it so i am not sure what is this green check mark here let me let me do one thing let me right click on this and click properties uh, if i can find some information okay uh, enable dns dynamic updates okay looks good okay it looks good okay uh, what is this here it shows red red color here next to the scope so this is the place where we configure the ip addresses information on the dhcp server okay let me check what is happening here okay address pool address leases reservation scope options policies but why is it showing red here let me right click on it and see how it goes okay uh, display statistics advanced configure failover recon reconcile activate all right so this could be the problem because the scope has been disabled on the dhcp server so if the scope has been disabled on the dhcp server then uh, basically the ip addresses would not be assigned to any target devices in the network so this could be the issue so what what we can do is let's try to activate this and see how it goes okay we have activated it and the red color symbol is gone and this turned green if you have noticed it ipv4 it has turned green so what we can do is let us check the address pool okay start ip address is 192.168.160.200 and the ending is 192.168.160.249 okay everything looks good we have just activated the scope let's do one thing let us try to reboot this target device and see how it goes okay i am uh, restarting the target device again let's see how it does this time it's trying to contact the dhcp server all right it got the ip address this time and it is trying to do something you see that like a few seconds ago it it showed the dhcp it showed the ip address so i think it is trying to uh, boot the windows yes yes so it's it seems to be loading so yeah so this could be the issue basically the dhcp server uh, DHCP scope was in down state. It somebody you know had de deactivated it. It was in down state. That is the reason why the target devices in the network were not able to get the IP address from the DHCP server. Since we have activated the DHCP scope and started this uh, target device machine, it's trying. It got the IP address and it is trying to communicate well this time. So let's wait until it loads into Windows. But so far it is looking good. So this is the VDisk name, which is Windows 2K12 new.1. And this is a server IP and this is the client IP. So it's trying to load into Windows. Please bear with me guys. This is a lab environment and my, uh, my network or my devices in the network would take some time to load. So it's uh, currently loading. It's Windows Server 2012 R2. And it should ask for credentials. Okay, let me try to log in. Okay, we logged in successfully. So if you want to check if we have really connected to the PVS server or not, you can do a quick check from here. What you can do is you can just uh, go here and uh, wait for a couple of seconds.
just click so you see this here this, this shows the weirdest status so what i will do is i'll just i'll just right click on it i'll click on virtual disk status okay so something should pop up all right i'm connected to the uh, server 192.168.160.246 and it is booting the virtual disk which is uh, VDisk from the PBR server and this is the virtual disk information windows 2k12 new.1.av dot dot hdx and it is in read only mode which is good so whenever you are connecting to the uh, whenever you are streaming the uh, VDisk as a user you should get a read only mode okay but whenever you are making changes as an administrator then you will get read and write mode here alright so everything looks good the issue has been resolved i hope you find this information helpful if you like it please give it a like and if you have any questions please leave a comment thank you for watching